Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, today I have uh, another spectrum analyzer and it's this uh, USB ones. Uh, almost a year ago, it was one of my first videos, I uh, reviewed uh, this little spectrum analyzer and you've probably seen them in, in one of my last videos too because when I'm uh, looking at filters then uh, I do use it because it has a tracking generator. And this is, this is the LTD set 35 So that means it goes from 35 megahertz up to 4.4 gig. But that means below 35, you can't make measure anything. Uh, but aside from that, this was perfect because it was around 30 or 35 uh, dollars and you have a really, really nice spectrum analyzer with tracking generator. But now lately, I found one to fill that gap. And uh, it's from uh, Azeroth Wind Whisper. And it is this one. I couldn't find one with the case because then I would have bought that. And it is based on the same uh, processor, but it has another chip as a generator because this one has the ADF4551. And this one is another one. This one has the SI5351A. And uh, because it uses the same processor and also the same serial chip, we can have a look at it later. It can be controlled with the same software as this one. So that is very cool. You have one piece of software. You can go all the way from this one starts, well, the chip starts at 8K, I believe, up to 200. Um, but this one is limited from 500K, so half a megahertz, up to 140. So that is cool. Um, be aware because there are lookalikes, and it's not that they are uh, not good, it's just that they are different. There is one that's called the D6 that, I, that has the ADF chip. So that means it's again from 35 to 4.4 uh, uh, G. That's not what you want because you want to be below. So have a look. I will show them which uh, are not good <laughs> and I will show which one are good. So let's have a closer look. This is the little one with the ADF chip. I took it out of his uh, box and here is the other one. So you can see the older, one, the newer one with the lower frequencies is a bit bigger. Um, yeah, they just used more space because I think they could have put it closer together, but they just didn't. So let's have a look. First, the uh, old one with the ADF. Okay, here is the little one, as you can see, uh, 35 up to 4400M, and it is on this chip, the STM32F103CAT6, and uh, that is a 32-bit uh, ARM chip, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very commonly used, and then we go to the tracking generator, which is here up, that is the, of course, the signal generator. And here you can see it is the ADF4351. So yeah, that's why it goes from 35 to 4400. And then we go to the input. And here we have the M810 but it's actually the, the IAM18008 and uh, it, is, uh, it is a double, uh, double balance mixer and it can go up to 5 uh, gigahertz. And then how does the communicate the chip? We go here back to the main processor right here. And 
here we have the serial chip, it's very famous. It's the CH340. This is already the G version. That's it. Let, let's get the other one. Here we have the lower frequency spectrum analyzer. Here they call it the SA5351 network test version 3. But if we look at the bottom right here, they say Biocerot, Wind Whisper, Date of Production, and here is the actual chip. So if we go here to the output, let me see that. Yes, you can see here it is the 5351. As in this, this oscillator can do 2.5k up to 200, but uh, here it is used, maybe it's limited just by the ARM processor, the software that's in there, from half a megahertz uh, up to 140. And if we go to the input circuit here, this is the SA612A, and that is also a double balanced mixer. But this one, uh, yeah, works best up to 200 megahertz. So that is uh, sufficient in this system. And oh, guess what? The communication to the USB right here. It's also a 340. So here they are. And they look a little bit different. Uh, here are a lot less lights. There's one little LED right there. And uh, here we have more. Here you manually switch on and off the tracking generator, while by this one it just switches on when it's uh, activated. Well, it did come with some uh, extra accessories, and uh, well, useful of course, proper USB cable to connect it to the computer, and it even came with because it does say uh, network tester. Eh? And it also came with uh, two extra cables and a little circuit board, so you can also measure antennas. So that is uh, cool. Yes, a nice extra. Uh, yeah, let's let's connect it to the computer. Yeah, before I install any driver of a serial port, I usually just see if it already works, especially because this is the CH340 will probably by, be detected automatically and also to see what COM port it will create I just now uh, connect it and there it is USB serial CH340 COM5 so when we start the software then we know we need uh, COM5 and uh, well, let's just start the software Well, it's exactly the same software as uh, we used before with the other one. The only thing we probably need to do is change the COM port. Uh, yes, COM3 cannot be found. It is the other uh, spectrum analyzer that it is connected to, to show to you. Uh, so we need to change it to COM5. Let's see, options. Go to COM5. Click OK. OK. Let's see what happens. Now we can do a full scan from 500, 1, 2, 3, up to 140, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Do a single shot. Let's do a single shot. I just um, connected the output to the input, so we should have a zero dB uh, line. So let's do that. As you can see, it's uh, not that fast. And I put it now in uh, 9999 samples, so almost uh, 10,000 samples. Uh, yeah, the other seem a lot faster but uh, we wait I will fast forward so there is this weird thing in the beginning that it seems to start at 5 or 6 megahertz here it is 
it's producing a lot of noise and also instead of uh, doing uh, zero dB it's it's like outputting a, a bit more uh, yeah okay maybe we can normalize that but I wonder what is here in the in the start uh, I still have this uh, 10 megahertz uh, band filter so uh, yeah let's play with that okay this is how I connected it I'm not sure if you can see but there is a little here yeah, there is a little blue light it's blinking and when it's scanning it is uh, full uh, blue so it just means it's connected i think so instead of putting the short as i have now i will put the bandpass filter this is a 10 megahertz bandpass and this i was unable to see on the other uh, usb spectrum analyzer because it started at 35 so let's see it says input on this side so that means i need to connect it to the output here and here it says output and i need to connect that to my input here and then we can do a scan from from uh, one to 30 megahertz just to see if the if the band band pass filter works okay let's fill in so it's one megahertz one three one two three up to 30 one two three one two three i set my samples to a thousand and it will be a lot faster and let's do a single shot Yeah, still the beginning looks very, very, very weird. I need to find out what, what that is. And also, it seems that the band pass filter doesn't do what it needs to do. So, I have been playing now a little bit more. And it says here, Frequenz viel Fauchung. And that's uh, something in German which means you need to multiply by 10. And I've been playing a bit with that. and and. I never saw this before and, and maybe it was always there but the other spectrum analyzer doesn't do anything with this but it seems that this one does so instead of putting 1 megahertz I put 10 megahertz and instead of uh, 30 I put 300 and if we do now a single shot look at this that makes a lot more sense and so instead of this here being uh, 50 megahertz this is actually 6 megahertz then this is 10 megahertz and then it drops down right there and this looks like a very nice bump pass filter so okay now we're gonna do the same and we're gonna see if this 5 megahertz is actually 500k and uh, we're gonna put a short now and really to see if it can go to the limits okay let's try to find the limits um, I set it here to uh, 1 megahertz, uh, which is then uh, 100k, well, and it should start at 500, so it should not do it, and I'm here on 2 gigahertz, that will be 200 megahertz, and it should go to 140, so if I do a single shot, yes, you see some noise here in the beginning, so that is not there, and here at 1.5, so that is 150 megahertz, it indeed uh, shows some weird stuff and probably this in the end is just nonsense so if i go then to five what did you do and maybe one two three one two three to fifteen hundred yes now the start is clean and the end it just drops here completely so yeah we can do a little bit more one four five zero one two three one two three yeah then it is so it goes uh, at least up to 100 145 megahertz well it doesn't matter too much it's it, as long as it goes up to 35 megahertz because then you can just get the other spectrum analyzer so uh cool it, it really fills the gap 
I connected it also to the Makoni just to see if it uh, actually, uh, instead of just doing the 0 dB line, did it actually register something? And uh, it did, and I will show you. Okay, I mentioned now with the Makoni, I put the signal of uh, 100 megahertz and uh, it's minus 3 dB on the Marconi because if I do a 0 dB then, uh, then the signal is a lot louder so I think it needs to be normalized still because the, zero, the, the Marconi is good as well on the uh, signals uh, spectrum analyzer but uh, it is indeed measuring a 100 megahertz uh, signal so uh, what if I do 140 Megahertz. Let's do another shot. Yes, there it is, 140. So it does measure it still. And if I do 50 megahertz, and I need to go a little bit lower here. Yes, there it is. And the harmonic goes out. But uh, it seems to work very good. So this uh, SI5351 can really fill the gap that this uh, ADF4351 is uh, is leaving in the in the lower frequencies, and it goes even uh, up to 145 megahertz. So that is really cool. But there it breaks. So it's it's just to. It just doesn't get it into the two meters completely, but uh, there is where this one uh, can go. So with these two together, you can go all the way from half a megahertz up to 4.4 gigahertz for around $70. So that is really, really cool. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.